everybody, what's going on? I am Greg Sussman, joined today by Tom Vecchio of FanDuel, who's here to break down tonight's NBA slate. What's happening, Tom? Yeah, 11 games slate before the All-Star break, and so then we get a week off. Uh, let's hop in. Let's get right into it. This is the last big night before the All-Star break, as you mentioned, so there's a lot of games and players to choose from. So we begin with some of your studs, and that takes us to the Cleveland Cavaliers and Andre Drummond. It's not a sentence I thought I'd say two weeks ago, but that's what the truth is. You like Drummond tonight? Why is that? Yeah, tonight's 11 games played. I want to say just like overall, we don't actually have a ton of injuries we need to be worrying about. Uh, we do have Kevin Love, who's listed as questionable for the Cavaliers. And with Andre Drummond now on the Cavaliers, as you said, we don't have too much of a sample size to draw from since he only played one game. So this really isn't about whether or not Kevin Love plays or not. This is just like factually a good spot for Andre Drummond. Pace up spot for the Cavs against the Hawks. We know the Hawks don't play defense. We see... The over-under sitting at 234 points. If we actually look at Drummond's stats when he was on the Pistons earlier this year against the Hawks in the three games, he averaged 20 points and 14.7 rebounds. So this is a spot we would want to be looking to Drummond kind of regardless what team he is with, regardless if Kevin Love plays or not. And with the extra usage potentially for Drummond with Love out, I think this is just a lock and load spot for Drummond. All right, get Drummond in there without the injuries. We know a little bit more right now than we normally do at this time. And Andre Drummond should be in a good spot tonight for the Cavaliers, so get him in your lineups. Another stud you're pretty high on this slate here, Tom, is Bradley Beal for the Washington Wizards. Second night of a back-to-back -back for them, but they are playing the New York Knicks, whose defense has, well, it struggled most of this year, although it's been better under head coach Mike Miller. Bradley Beal, second night of a back-to-back. -back. How come you're in? I'm just on board with a player like Bradley Beal. I want to say almost every single night, especially for tournaments. I mean, we look at what Zach Levine did last night. It's kind of the same player. Someone who just takes over 20 field goal attempts every single game. You know, Beal is that guy. You know, he's having a 29. He's averaging 29 you know, points per game this season, which is career high. Not surprising that Wall is gone for the entire year. But we're locking in 40 points every single night, 20 field goal attempts. If he gets hot, we're looking at a 60-point upside. It is a pace-down spot for the Wizards, but if you look back at his game log, they're on the road, they're at home, good defense, bad defense, pace up, pace down. Bradley Beal gets it done. He's scoring a ton of real points. Uh, this Knicks defense is getting better, but I'm still banking on those 20, 25 field goal attempts from him, 40-plus FanDuel points every single night. Those points are always really strong for Bradley Beal. He has the Wizards pushing for a playoff spot right now. Uh, does Bradley Beal? We'll see if they can get the job done. But let's, let's first make sure Bradley Beal hooks us up tonight on FanDuel. One more start I want to make sure we get to, Tom, and that brings us to Devin Booker of the Phoenix Suns. Always fast-paced. Booker uh, having a heck of a year thus far. Why do you like him on this massive slate? So tonight against the Golden State Warriors, I think, is just a, a great spot to attack. 226 point over under. We have the Warriors sitting at 13th in pace, Phoenix sitting at 10th. Uh, I was big on Booker the other night when Aiton was questionable, and he just didn't get it done in that game, right? 19 Fanduel points in 31 minutes. Not great. He shot 2 of 11 from the field and 0 of 4 from deep. So just an off night from the field. But this is a player who's shooting 49% from the field. And if with Aiton listed as questionable, again, we know that Booker is still that guy for the Suns. He can score 40 points. I think he's a little bit too cheap uh, tonight. So I want to be trusting him, especially if Aiton is out again. It's a significantly easier matchup compared to playing the Lakers in their most recent game. Golden State, horrible this year. They don't play defense, fast-paced. Another player who takes 20-plus field goal attempts almost every single game outside of this, you know, off night he had the other night. So I'm going back to Booker tonight. I want Bradley Beal. I want these players that can score 40-plus real points. All right, love it. Bradley Beal, Devin Booker, Andre Drummond, three awesome studs with the floors just so, so high, all in good spots tonight. The matchups are great. Devin Booker, the latest stud. You're going to want to get in there on FanDuel tonight. In order to get these players in there, we got to save some money. Without a, a ton of injuries on the slate, we got to figure out how. So let's begin with Rondé Hollis-Jefferson. Why do you like RHJ in this matchup? So we want to be looking to RHJ if Ibaka is out again. Ibaka's list as questionable, missed their most recent game. We saw Hollis-Jefferson get the start in that game, posted a very solid 38.7 FanDuel points in 33 minutes. I think we can be looking to him again if, you know, the things fall our way. With Ibaka being out, he should be in the starting lineup. And he sees, you know, a very modest 2% increase in usage when we adjust for not only Ibaka being out, but also Marcus Gasol being out. But even with a 19.4% usage rate, you know, increased with two with that 2% increase, he's still posting 1.02 FanDuel points per minute. So at a modest price tag, you know, against a, a pretty modestly bad, uh, you know, Nets defense, 
uh, we can be looking to him in the starting lineup, uh, being productive, $4,100 $4, price tag, really everything going for RHJ tonight. You're going to want to watch Serge Ibaka's availability tonight for the Toronto Raptors to see if RHJ makes sense. If Ibaka's out, obviously RHJ should be in there, so consider making the move with Rondé Hollis Jefferson. Up next, Ursan Ilyasova is always good for a few games during the season where he's going to absolutely go off. You believe one of those games could be tonight? Yeah, we know he gets the start when Atentacumpo is ruled out. He missed their most recent game. Atentacumpo has already been ruled out for tonight's game. I think this is one of the more obvious plays on the entire slate. It's when Atentacumpo was out, you go to Ilyasova in the starting lineup. You can look to Milton. You can look to Eric Bledsoe as well. Overall, this is a pretty solid game environment against the Pacers. 222 point over under. We have a one point spread. And we see Eliasova coming in at $4,100. In his most recent game, he was out there for 23 minutes. Tonight, we have him projected for 24, putting up 24 FanDuel points. Again, you're kind of just locking in a floor with some of these value plays so you can spend up for those players that have a massive ceiling. Ursan Eliasova in the lineup without Giannis and Tinakubo, getting ready for All Star Weekend, we hope. So, Ursan Ilyasova, a fine play tonight, an obvious play, but still the right one. One more value play to get to on this slate here, Tom, and that brings us to Dylan Brooks, who's taking on an expanded role with Memphis after some of the trades they made at the deadline. You like Dylan Brooks tonight. How come? I absolutely love this game against Portland, 233 point over under. I, like, I wanted multiple players from this game. And I'll say for Brooks, you know, don't box score watch. Uh, if you're looking at his recent games, 14 and 18 Fanduel points in these last two, really not strong. Like no one's debating that. Uh, in those two games, he shot four of 17 and four of 12 from the field and went 0 of 11 from deep. So a bit of a cold stretch, but super fast paced game. Like you said, he's taking on an expanded role and actually holds a usage high among their new starting five with John Morant, Kyle Anderson, Brooks, uh, Jaron Jackson, and Jonas Valanciunas. He is the usage leader right now. It's a small sample size, but we want to trust the player who's shooting over 40% from the field in a high over-under game, in a high pace game, to kind of get back in form with his shooting tonight. So I love this game environment. I love his new role. His price is great, and I kind of want to buy in if there's any recency you know, bias against him just because he had two bad games. Yeah, this, let's buy back in on Dylan Brooks. Let's buy that bounce back here in a good matchup against Portland. Should be a fun one. Dylan Brooks, someone to very much consider putting in your FanDuel lineups tonight. That's going to do it for us here on the Hurry Up for today. Tom Vecchio, I appreciate the time, man. Yeah, we have a week off. I'll see you in a couple weeks then. Oh, yeah, you have the week off. That's awesome. I'll be back tomorrow with Jim Sonis as we take a look at the XFL. Have a great night. Enjoy the games. And we'll see you here tomorrow for another edition of the FanDuel Hurry Up.